All right, so today's open inward conversation is with another incredibly brave soul that I've known for many, many years. Uh, her name is Judy and talk about strength and tenacity up the wazoo. So not only has Judy been dealing with diabetes since she was a child at the age of four, uh, she has MS and she has been struggling with chronic migraines and depression for many years. And on top of all of this, a couple of years ago, Judy went through an organ transplant and got a brand new pancreas, or a fairly new pancreas. <laughs> anyway, on top of all of that, dealing with anti-rejection, um, drug therapy, try living in Judy's body for a day and she put her hand up to come and have a journey portrait with me. So uh, let me let me bring Judy onto this the the screen and uh, and invite Judy to come and share with us. So let me just change the view here. Welcome Judy. Greetings. <laughs> Greetings. We are entities. <laughs> I love it. And that matches your purple hair, which is really, really lovely and purple. I love it. Oh, so, I'm so glad. <laughs> so, Judy, I gave a little intro to you, but I would love for you to share a little bit about you because you're a very interesting kind of dark horse, I guess would be fair to say, wouldn't you? So do you want to tell us a little bit about you, like your career and, and not just, you know, because you, yeah, like okay, you go, take over. Tell okay. me about um, you. Laurie, I mentioned the childhood diabetes and that shaped my childhood greatly because I was forced to be responsible because I had to keep track of what was going on in my body. So I sort of didn't have a real childhood. And I got bullied a lot, but that's where the scrappy side of me came in because I fought back. And then into Wait. high school, my parents were encouraging of me in my scholastic career because it was difficult for me to play a lot of sports, et cetera, because of the um, diabetes. And also I had mild asthma. So oh the, yeah, the, the, uh, brains were, were really pushed and my dad was a university professor and so he was a born teacher and he helped me out if I missed anything in school. So I went on to university and uh, was very proud to get an honours BSc in biology um, and from that couldn't get a job because it was Bob Ray days if anybody remembers those <laughs> and uh, then I got some retraining as a radiation therapist and went or came to Toronto to work as a radiation therapist and I had found my niche it yeah. was mathematical in that you're doing some calculations or checking calculations and numbers and such and it also was people oriented in that you were talking to patients you were dealing with people who are in an incredibly stressful situation and you're trying to ease them into what's going on and keep them as reassured and calm as possible, uh, which can be a challenge with some people. And so yeah. it was really my math brain and my empathetic brain that got together and gave me the perfect job for radiation therapy. Unfortunately, it was the MS that made me too disabled to work mm -hmm. and I had to um, stop working and take a short-term disability pension that didn't last because governments and insurance companies are, well, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Dear. So, yes. so here you are, you've, your career is kind of winded down on you and, uh, and now your focus is on just your well-being and trying to manage all of the things that are going on for you. Yeah. And it was a lot like juggling balls, except the balls would occasionally grow big spikes and be completely unmanageable. And they would interact interestingly. I have chronic pain from my MS. And if the pain got beyond my ability to manage, then my blood sugar would go up. And if my blood sugar went up really high, 
I felt horrible and my pain tolerance would go down, which meant I would feel the pain more. And so my blood sugar would go up and I'd feel the pain more. And it became a horrible, nasty, negative cycle. And it was one that was really challenging to take care of. And, you know, wasn't a lot of fun. Um, the migraines, I finally got a referral to a fabulous doctor and found out that uh, narcotics are actually a migraine trigger. And I had been wow. prescribed narcotics for my migraines. Wow. So they weaned me off the narcotics, which took six months. I'd been on them for quite a while. And once I was off them, the number of headaches went down and we started into other therapies that have helped me, um, which I have to get back to now that COVID is basically done. Um, so I'm now at a point where I'm not bedridden, I'm managing, I'm getting along. And I went and had the photo shoot with Laurieann and it was a wonderful experience because I know her and at one point, we were laughing so hard, um, we had to stop for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're going, you're going too far ahead. Slow down. Back up, okay. the, back up the bus a tiny bit. So this uh, is your career, and you've kind of wrapped into it your, your health challenges. So tell me, um, and, and, and I know we're going to get to the fact that you had, you know, you, you had an organ transplant, and that's massive. On top of yeah. everything else, it's just massive. And, um, and you're still kind of in the process of becoming integrated with this, with this new organ. So, so I think what I want to ask you now is, um, you know, when you, when you, when you were starting to get curious about maybe doing, uh, you know, a journey portrait, what was that? What was going on with you? What was what was the thoughts that were coming through where this was something that you were thinking, I think I want to do that? Well, at that point, I had taken on some volunteering at the hospital and I was getting quite a bit of enjoyment from that. But that was the only thing I was doing really outside of the house. And I thought, I can do more. But the question was, mm -hmm what do I do? You know, I know the various parts of my personality and, and the strengths that they have, but I thought, what next? What else? And so I came, got some fabulous photos from you. And also we journeyed a bit into um, uh, my creative side, which isn't something that gets a lot of space in my day-to-day -day living because I just don't have time for it unless I make time for it. And so it was great to be able to get a sense of, yes, I know all the parts of me, um, but there is something else that I might try and do as well. So your, so let me just see if I've hear if I'm hearing you right, right? So, so the idea of doing the, the journey portrait wasn't just to get beautiful photos of you, it was to have the experience that, that was a co-creative process. Yes. To explore these various aspects of your personality. And um, so, and that's what we did. And we did it in, in a wonderful way. So let's, let's get into that. So, um, so I have this theory, Judy, and I might've shared this with you before. And I've been, I've I've been spent I've spent years trying to language this, but so let me do it in a crude way, because I because I I think you can relate to this. I have this theory that there are a lot of people walking around, men and women, that have this secret kind of wanting to be truly seen for who they are, and and yet when you pull a camera out or a phone up, it's just like ah. You know, because there's this feeling it doesn't feel safe and it just feels like, um, it, you know, you're not going to be captured in this way of who you really are. And it's just so d can you relate to that? Does that sort of. Yes, um, often through my life, I have partly to please others projected whomever they wanted to see. Oh, wow. Yeah. And when somebody puts a camera up in face in front of my face i don't know who to be i do know now because i've had the experience to realize i'm me but uh 
it's it's always been one of those things that I hated having my photo taken. Um, yeah. And with you, it was fun. Um, you'd asked me to reach for a certain personality or feeling, and I don't know if you noticed, but each time I would shut my eyes, connect yes. to that, and then bring it out for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the having a camera pointing at me is to me impossible to catch my true self um, unless it's a candid photo. So you you kind of like you just reminded me something just by saying that you know you didn't know how to behave and and what you know what are you, how are you supposed to act what personality should you project for when someone brings out a camera and um, uh, you know it's like we're little kids and we're like you know we give our we give our cheesy smile so there's this there's this thing the, the the japanese people believe that we have three faces and this will make sense to you the first one is the one we put on for the outside world right yeah and and so you know just think of us walking around with our 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 resting you know you know what face right walking around in the grocery store or whatever and hopefully smiling at people uh, and then we have the face that we reserve just for our loved ones and things are softer and they're more open. That's why I love working with twos because you get mm. those beautiful expressions. And then the third face is the one that is our truest expression. It is the one that we reserve just for ourselves. And we might get a glimpse of it in the mirror. And so my goal is to try to capture it, to create a safe vessel for you to actually allow that true reflection to come through. So tell me something though we went through various different aspects of your personality and we went through some really powerful connection points which we're going to get into mm -hmm. do you feel like when you look at your photos you're seeing that true expression of you yes and i am extremely happily surprised that we did so well or yeah. you did so well um it was the, teamwork it was totally yeah. teamwork it's um, because you're able to take a lot of photos through the time. What I might be offering to you is what is, I believe, my essential self, but with a little wearing and a little conversation between us, I expect the proper true me came through a little bit later. I'd be surprised to think that the first photo you took of me in any one makeup was the one that we decided was yeah. best there's definitely there's definitely um a, a, a like a, a like a bell curve where you know we start off and then there's that point where it's just magic and and i and i try to tell people this and i think i might have mentioned it to you there's a point where i swear to god i can see like a flash of light or mercury in people's eyes and i'm like that's your spirit your spirit's here like, you know, just, you know, be aware of that. So, oh my goodness. Okay. So, um, why don't we, why don't we crack open the beginning of your shoot? And, um, so this was, I'm just going to start a little screen share here and, um, we're going to bring up, um, Scrappy Judy. <laughs> so and you know this this was this was so much fun to give you the space to uh come into feeling a sense of self that is well why don't you explain it in your own words tell us about your kilt your connection to the celtic to the scottish to to this woman here that we're looking at um most of my heritage is is scottish um my father had a little bit of everything in him, so Gorman isn't uh, uh, really a Scottish name. I think it's Irish. But the Celtic Anderson comes through very strongly. And when I'm wearing the kilt, it just brings out the Scottish side in me, and I get scrappy. And as you can see, they are somewhat mischievous. Um, <laughs> I that, love this photo so much. <laughs> this, this gal is fun to go to pubs with. <laughs> um, she will be like that one moment and then if somebody walks into the bar that she does not like 
she will send them a very strong suggestion by her look that they better just not come near the group she's with. <laughs> um, so the scrappiness sort of came from growing up being bullied and then realizing that I may not have all the gifts of everybody, um, but I have a brain and I know how to use it. Yeah. And so, you know, I'll, well, when I was young, I was kind of sneaky sometimes, which is where that mischievous look comes from, but I can put together a good battle when I need to. Yeah. And so this connection wasn't just about you expressing this aspect of you, but it was also about connecting into your ancestral roots. Yes. And, and because that's the origin of the scrappy in you. Uh, right. And so, yeah. so there's that, there's that sense of, of like, there's a lineage behind you that you are holding a space for and expressing. And like, you know, there's this pride, this, this pride of the ancestors with you. Yeah. And, and I feel like you really, that really shone and it was beautiful. So let me ask you another question, Miss Judy, freak of nature that you are. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so as we began the shoot, mm -hmm. what were you hoping to discover about yourself? Well, I was aware of the various parts of me, you know, scrappy, intellectual, sensual. Um, but I wasn't really sure what, for lack of a better word, what proportions they made up in the essential me. Um, and I thought that the photo shoot would help me find that and as well find any parts of me that I knew were there but didn't pay that much attention to. Mm -hmm. um, and possibly a hint of with my strengths coming through in the photo shoot, what ideas I might have as to where to go from here. Because I was in a fairly stable place mm -hmm. and sort of looking around going, now what? You, you're talking about in your life, right? Mm -hmm. And so yes. coming into the shoot, so your what you were hoping to discover about yourself was was now what? So so what is the now what? What did you what did you get? What did you come away with? Like aside from the photos, they're like the gravy. What did you come yeah. away with? Well, I was really pleased to see I got an affirmation of what I thought I was was me. Um, yeah, but I also huge. Um, I also was somewhat surprised at the creative side of me that came out um, in expression. I mean, I've written poetry as a teenager and occasionally as an adult, but nothing really serious. And I'd always thought of my sister as the creative one because she's a kindergarten teacher and she can think up anything. My brother's a computer whiz, but I didn't seem to have that creative side that many of the Andersons had. Uh, and so I was really pleased to see that come to the forefront. Um, and thought, well, there's a thought, we can definitely explore that and see what I'd like to do with it. Hi, it's me, Laurieann. I just wanted to thank you for watching today's episode of Open Inward Conversations. And I wanted to invite you to do a little intuitive dig. Do you have a niggly feeling that maybe this is something you'd like to explore, that you'd like to experience, that you'd like to unpack this aspect of yourself and be captured in this really sacred manner? You know, you're, you're sitting here watching this because you're already a spiritually aligned person or you're on that path. And this whole work is really, really geared toward allowing our soul to come forward and be captured for us, for our loved ones, for our future grandchildren, uh, great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren and so on. There's something to be said about old photographs that stand the test of time, that maintain a link to those that we love that we've never met. It's kind of magical. 
In this digital age, people don't print their photos very often anymore and they get lost. They just become digital dust. I beg you, don't become digital dust. <laughs> so if this is something you're just tiny, tiny bit curious about, you know what? Book a discovery call. Let's grab 15 minutes. I would love to meet you. I would love to talk about what your dream is, how you dream of being photographed. And I'd also like to talk about what your concerns are, what your fears are. Uh, all of that stuff is all part of the journey, right? So book a 15 minute discovery call. It could change your life. I look forward to meeting you. I really do. See you soon.